I know that all of you are aware that Patty Duke Aston has had a long association with the miracle worker. But maybe you don't know that now the roles are being reversed, and instead of doing Helen Keller, you're doing Annie Sullivan for NBC. Yes, time marches on. <laughs> Patty, did you ever fantasize when you were doing Helen Keller? Did you ever fantasize that one day you might be doing Annie Sullivan? Always. I, I don't think that I fantasized that I might be doing it. I fantasized wanting to do it. Um, I, I really never thought that it would happen. Uh, and I'm ever grateful to Melissa Gilbert for wanting so much to play Helen that she and her manager, Ray Katz, optioned The Miracle Worker and uh, then called me and asked me if I wanted to play Annie Sullivan. Patty, do you find yourself, though, um, even unconsciously emulating what Anne Bancroft did? I think that unconsciously a part of me will always emulate uh, some of the things that Anne Bancroft does. I think that my association with her is so filled with love and admiration uh, that, that some of her has become a part of me. Um, I don't, there was no conscious effort to imitate, certainly. Uh, I worked very hard to do just the opposite. Uh, we all everyone in this production, approached it as, um, as a new piece of material in some ways, certainly as, as a classic in others, as one you know, would approach Shakespeare. Uh, many, many people have played all those different roles. Um, but certainly I will never give up my love and admiration for Anne Bancroft and all the good things I learned from her. Do you find one role more difficult than the other? Well, probably whatever role you're doing at the moment seems the most difficult. Uh, so it was hard for me to sort that out. I felt that, that the role of Annie Sullivan was more difficult, but I'm not sure why. Uh, perhaps if I had played that role first uh, and was playing Helen this time, I might think just the opposite. Um, certainly there are more lines to learn. Um, also, I think that just physically, um, 20 years have gone by. And it's a lot easier to throw yourself around a room and, and exert that much energy when you're 12 than it is when you're 32. Do you ever try to help Melissa or suggest, uh, suggest things, or does she ever ask you about a certain scene or a certain thing? I felt that it would be very unfair to impose my old interpretation of Helen Keller on Melissa. And I was delighted that she didn't need it. <laughs> She came with her interpretation, which is just beautiful. And certainly we exchanged ideas, as anyone might, working on any project, uh, playing any roles that are so intertwined. And we did do that, but uh, not from the standpoint of, here's how I did it, Melissa, and I think that you'd better off, be better off doing it this way. She's a very instinctive, uh, talented, creative actress. and and very willing to absorb and learn and grow. She's just wonderful and a dear person besides, which is really nice. Patty, did you ever have a chance to meet Helen Keller? Yes, I did. What was it like? It was, uh, in some ways, an overwhelming experience. I, I've found through the years that I've been almost inarticulate about being able to, to describe what it was like. Sometimes when things are, are that meaningful, to me, I find it very difficult to put it into words. Um, it was a very warm and and uh, there were some very funny exchanges that we had, and and mostly I started out in awe of her and wound up feeling very much like um, a niece or a. She was 80 years old at the time, so I'm sure she wouldn't mind wherever she is. But if I said sort of like a, a wonderful grandmother. After you met her, was there anything that you wanted to change about your interpretation? No, um, because as I said, she was 80 years old when I met her. Uh, uh, many of the things that I was playing, I wouldn't be able to, to observe uh, at that point because she had gone so far beyond the, the animal-like person that she was trapped in her darkness. Did she like the miracle worker? 
I think she did. She was not able to come and see it. She, she used to go to many concerts and plays, and at this point she was unable to. Uh, but I, I do know that she read the script and was very proud that Mr. Gibson, who wrote it, uh, paid homage to teacher Annie Sullivan. Uh, she felt that it was a tribute long overdue. Well, Patty, we've always loved watching The Miracle Worker. We see it every time it plays on TV, and we'll be especially interested in seeing your interpretation of Annie Sullivan. Thank Thanks you, Bobby. Thanks for talking with Good us to today here in Hollywood. Thank you. Sir.